Welcome to our worship on this January 10th, 2021, we, as we mark the baptism of Jesus by his cousin John. We hope you are keeping safe and well in this new year. Due to the continuing provincial COVID-19 restrictions, this church is still closed to in-person worship and gatherings and meetings are not permitted. However, you may continue to contact the church office by phone or email, or check our website and social media accounts for the latest information on what is going on here at First Presbyterian Church. The church building may be closed, but we as the church are busy working elsewhere. Please do not hesitate to contact the church office should you or someone you know need pastoral care. If you haven't done so already, church offering envelopes for 2021 are available on the bench just inside the church street door to be picked up at your convenience. Just ring the bell and our very capable office administrator, Marianne Bim, will let you in. So come, let us worship and give thanks to God. Please join me in the call to worship, which is on the screen in front of you and also available in the online worship service, which you may find on our website. Let us read responsively. God's strong voice calls us to worship, calling us to sing and offer praise. God's creative voice calls us to worship, calling us to life and light. God's loving voice calls us to worship, calling us to love and be loved. Listen, for God's voice calls to us now. Our opening hymn is number 183, if you happen to have one of our navy blue hymn books, which I will get right now, because I forgot mine. There we go. But the words are also on the screen in front of you, so you may just follow along. The first hymn is number 183, Christ, when for us you were baptized. invite you to please join with me in the opening prayer, which again you will find on the screen in front of you or in our online worship service. We will read this prayer in unison. Holy One, Spirit of creation and renewal, enter into our hearts and our lives as you did at the day of our baptism. Descend on us like a dove as you did on Jesus' day of baptism that we may hear again your words of love and adoption. Speak from the heavens into our minds, that we may perceive your words of guidance and wisdom. Amen. And our prayer of confession, again, is also on the screen in front of you or in the online order of service, and we will read this responsibly. Speaking words of love, God creates us, calls to us, and claims us as God's own, welcoming us as we approach to confess that we are not all we should be as your people. When our hearts are hard as stone, soften us with your grace. When our lives are riddled with sin and pain, heal us with your mercy. 
when our ears are ringing with self-doubt and cynicism. Strengthen us with words of faith and love. When our minds are muddled with confusion and fear, enlighten us with the radiance of your wisdom. Speak to our spirits from the truth of your being, the reality of your love, and the promise of your forgiveness, that we may hear your voice clearly and follow where you call us to go. Amen. Hear the good news. Christ died for our sins once and for all. He, the just, suffered unjustly to bring us to God. Friends, Believe the good news in Jesus Christ. We are forgiven. Amen. And now I'd like to invite the children to join me at the gospel box to see what we have in here for us today. Let's see what we've got in here today. Oh, okay. Well, this might look familiar to some of you. Although I think more people tend to use these use the on the phone calendars, but this is a calendar, and it has the beginning of the new year. See, actually, this is the day we're on right now, January tenth. Okay, so we're just into the new year. Now, some people, when they turn the calendar over to a new year, they make New Year's resolutions. This means they make promises to themselves about things they hope to do in the new year. A lot of people make New Year's resolutions. But whether you make any resolutions or not, the new year gives you a chance to forget your past mistakes and look forward to doing better in the year ahead. In our Bible lesson today, we're going to read about a man called John the Baptist. I think you've heard of him before because we've talked about him during Advent. John went all around the countryside in Judea telling people to turn from their sins and to ask God for forgiveness. And after they asked for God's forgiveness, John baptized them in the River Jordan. They were baptized to show others that God had forgiven their sins and given them a fresh start. Now, Jesus himself was baptized by John and Jesus commanded us to go into all the world and make disciples, teaching them all that Jesus has taught us, and baptizing people in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Now, the church still baptizes people today, and we use this. We use a baptismal font, at least our church does. You may have been baptized when you were a baby, or you may have been baptized when you were a little bit older. When we see that someone's been baptized, it shows that they too have a fresh start in life through Jesus Christ because God's forgiven us. So as you think about it, this coming January, you know, we're in January now, just the beginning of a new year. In addition to praying for a fresh start to a new year, let's pray for a fresh start to our new life as well through our baptism in Jesus. Let's pray. Dear God, Thank you that for us, Jesus came to earth and was baptized to give all of us a new start. Help us to live as Christ lived so that we can show your love and forgiveness to everyone. Amen. Put that away. And now, let us pray for insight into God's word for us today. Listen, for as scripture is read, we may hear the voice of God thundering over the waters, hovering like a gentle breeze, or parting the clouds and speaking words of love. Listen, for God is speaking through the ages and through ancient words into an uncertain world with the unchanging promise of God's constant presence. Amen. And now I'd like to invite up our scripture reader, Mark Leslie, who will read to us from Psalm 91 and our scripture lesson for today. Psalm 91. 
As Reverend Mary Ann stated, we are reading Psalm 91 responsively this morning. You who live in the shelter of the Most High, who abide in the shadow of the Almighty, will say to the Lord, My refuge and my fortress, my God, my God in whom, whom I trust. For God will deliver you from the snare of the fowler and from the deadly pestilence. The Lord, the Lord will cover you with pinions. You will find refuge under God's wings. God's faithfulness is a shield and buckler. You will not fear the terror of the night or the arrow that flies by day. Or the pestilence that stalks in darkness or the destruction that wastes it at noonday. A thousand may fall at your side, 10,000 at your right hand, but it will not come near you. You will only look with your eyes and see the punishment of the wicked. Because you have made the Lord your refuge, the Most High your dwelling place, no evil shall befall you, no scourge shall near your tent. For the Lord will command the angels concerning you to guard you in all your ways. On their hands they will bear you up so that you will not dash your foot against a stone. You will tread on the lion and the adder, the young lion and the serpent you will trample underfoot. Those who love me, I will deliver. I will protect those who know my name. When they call to me, I will answer them. I will be with them in trouble. I will rescue them and honor them. With long life, I will satisfy them and show them my salvation. Our scripture reading today comes from the book Gospel of Mark, uh, chapter 1, verses 9 through 15. At that time, Jesus came from Nazareth to Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. Just as Jesus was coming up out of the water, he saw heaven being torn open and the Spirit descending on him like a dove. And a voice came from heaven. You are my son, whom I love. With you I am well pleased. At once the Spirit sent him out into the wilderness, and he was in the wilderness forty days, being tempted by Satan. He was with the wild animals and the angels attending him. After John was put in prison, Jesus went into Galilee proclaiming the good news of God. The time has come, he said. The kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe the good news. For the word of God in scripture, for the word of God within us, for the word of God around us, thanks, thanks be, be to God. God.
Let us pray. Creator and maker of us all, bless the word of my lips and the meditations of our hearts. Grow in us, show us your ways, and inspire us to live by your truth. Amen. As I mentioned in the children's message this morning, we are just two weeks into the new year. And many folks, as the children and I discussed, take the time at the beginning of the new year to make changes, to inject new life into their day-to-day -day routines. We might make resolutions to lose weight, get in shape, quit smoking, or eat better. The new year, the turning of a new year, may motivate us to transform ourselves to find new life. But at the same time, I wonder, are we being perhaps a bit too hard on ourselves, a bit too unforgiving? By the time Jesus is baptized in the scripture passage we heard Mark read to us today, he is an adult. Neither the gospel writer for Mark, nor any of the other gospel writers for that matter, really tell us why Jesus came to the Jordan to be baptized. You might wonder, did Jesus think he needed to make changes to repent, or as the Greek goes, metanoia, which means to turn around, um, his life before he began his earthly ministry? John, as we know from the Gospels, preached a baptism of forgiveness. You had to ask for God's forgiveness, and then you would be baptized to show you'd been forgiven. So this has been one thing that theologians have struggled with for centuries. If baptism's about forgiveness, why would the sinless Son of God need to be baptized? Well, the Gospels don't resolve that question. In fact, when you listen to the essentials of Mark's very brief account, perhaps what's most striking is that Jesus doesn't really do or say anything that sheds light on what's going on. As Mark, as the Gospel writer for the book of Mark writes, at that time, Jesus came from Nazareth in Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. Just as Jesus was coming up out of the water, he saw heaven being torn open and the Spirit descending on him like a dove. And a voice came from heaven, You are my Son, whom I love. With you I am well pleased. Now, do you see what I mean? Jesus is rather passive in all this. But on second thought, perhaps that's the way it should be. After all, this is the beginning of Jesus' public ministry. This is the start of his long and difficult journey toward Jerusalem and the cross. And so, at his baptism, Jesus doesn't have to do anything, but simply receive the gift of the Holy Spirit and of God's favor. Clearly, Mark's telling us that Jesus doesn't need forgiveness. But to hear those words, to affirm who he is, indeed, whose he is, is to hear that he, Jesus, is accepted, loved, pleasing. Well, these were powerful words that shaped not only that day, but also his entire earthly ministry. And here, perhaps, is the connection to our own baptisms and a reminder of why remembering Jesus' baptism matters so much. As I mentioned earlier, the new year often prompts us to look at the shortcomings in our lives to the areas in our lives where we think we're not up to scratch. But... Each of us also longs to hear words of acceptance, of identity, of blessing, and commitment. 
which is precisely the gift that we receive when we are baptized. Because we don't have to do anything to receive God's promises. Many of us are baptized as babies. Do you think babies can say anything? Nope, they can't, except they might cry when they get the water poured on their head. But they're not doing or saying anything to receive God's promises. And neither are we. We are passive recipients of God's blessing and favor. We are called God's beloved children, not because of something we do or something we did, but because we are, because of who God is. God is a loving parent who wants nothing more than to see us flourish. So in holy baptism, God just chooses us as we are. In holy baptism, God says, you are enough. I'm enough. We all are enough. Already, we are enough. That we are pleasing to God and we deserve God's love. And that identity as God's beloved child, because it is established not by us or anything we do, but by God, that can't be taken away from us. Or, for that matter, we can't lose it. God continues to come into our lives to call us beloved and blessed. And it's comforting to hear those words that we're beloved and blessed because life is not easy right now. We've certainly faced enough problems just in this past year. Struggles with daily life under the pandemic. Uncertainty about the world. Fears about our own lives and the future of loved ones. But we can face whatever might be plaguing us with greater confidence because we know that God is on our side not because of anything that we do, but just because God loves us. Think for a moment about all that's happened in the recent past and all that might occur in the coming year. Some of it we can be prepared for and we can anticipate, but much of it, well, we just simply can't imagine it. A year ago, None of us had ever heard of COVID-19. It's daunting, isn't it? But until we remember that God is with us throughout all of it, strengthening us, encouraging us, granting us grace sufficient to become the people that God wants us to be. God says this to Jesus, in our text today, you are my beloved child. With you, I am well pleased. And those are powerful words, aren't they? Words that will shape and strengthen us throughout this new year and into the future. Those words, while they were spoken to Jesus, are meant for all of us because we share in Jesus' baptism. They are words that remind us that we are called God's children, not because of something we do, but because of who God is, our loving Heavenly Father. So as we go into this new year, while we might do what we can to enhance and improve our lives through all those New Year's resolutions, baptism and remembering Jesus' baptism and our own, that reminds us that you are more than enough and that God is well pleased with you. Amen. Let us pray. Holy God, creator of light and herald of goodness, at the waters of his baptism, you proclaim Jesus as your beloved son. 
With the baptized of every time and generation, may we say yes to your call as our beloved Father, which we hear today in your word, and be led to the life of abundance that we experience through your kinship and your love. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Our next hymn is number 403 in the Navy Blue Hymn Book, if you have one, but the words will also be on the screen in front of you, and they are printed in our, included in our online service. Number 403, she comes sailing on the wind. Sing. 
And now, let us come to God, knowing that God is always ready to hear us, and through the Spirit, give us hope. Let us pray. Gracious Father, you are Lord of our beginnings and our endings and all that lies in between. We praise you for how you have poured out upon us blessing after blessing, for how you have reached out to us, for how you have come to us, for how you have spoken to us. Help us to live the faith you have given us. Loving God, we thank you for how Christ Jesus came among us and identified himself completely with us going so far as to take upon himself our sin, our suffering, and finally our death. Help us, Lord, to not hold back ourselves from identifying with him and with the church that he established. May we indeed be united with him in his baptism and death so that we might also share in his resurrection. Help us to commit ourselves to him and to the family he has called us to be a part of, to be members of his visible body here in this place, to be his disciples and apostles, his evangelists and teachers, his feet and his hands, his eyes and his ears, his light and his salt, day by day in the community around us, no matter where we are. Anoint all the people of your church, O God, that your will may be done and your name be glorified. Make us one as you are one, both with those who are near and those who are far off. Anoint the grieving with your comfort so that they may know your light even in the time of their deepest darkness. Amid the broken in body and spirit, with your healing anoint them so that they may know that you are Lord of all their days and so that they may praise you always no matter what each day may bring. We especially pray for those who are dealing with the effects of this pandemic through sickness, loss of employment, loneliness and isolation, or uncertainty about the future. Anoint, O God, all those for whom we now ask in the silence of our hearts. O God of infinite mercy, pour your love out upon us each day. We pray through Jesus, your baptized one, he who first taught us to pray to you, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. and hands wide open, we bring our very lives to this time of offering. May we bring more than just gifts on a plate, but hearts and minds ready to hear God's call and respond where God's voice leads us. You may give in several ways, online through Canada Helps. You may sign up at the church office for pre-authorized remittance or PAR. Uh, Send an e-transfer to firstkirk at truespeed.ca or deliver to the church in person or by mail. In whatever ways you choose to give, we thank you. And now let us bless our offerings by singing our doxology, the words of which are on the screen or in the order of service.
gifts with your voice of creation, your healing and your love. Mighty God, transform our small gifts into abundant offerings for a world that is so desperately in need of your light and life. We pray this in the name of your Son, the baptized one, Jesus Christ. Amen. And our closing hymn is again in our hymn book, number 205, O Love, How Deep, How Broad, How High. And again, the words will be on the screen in front of you or printed in the online order of service. Amidst a noisy world, make way to listen for God. In the busiest of days, find time to listen to God. For in the listening, we finally hear this truth. We are beloved children of God, created in love, created for love, created to love. Let us go out there to listen and love. And may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, our heavenly parent, and the hope and joy of the Holy Spirit descend on you now and forever. Amen.